Hi, I'm Jesse. And I'm Jason, and this is our game, UCube, for the CS248 video game competition at Stanford University. So you see you start out the game as this cute little cube named UCube, and you're moving around on a mysterious planet in space, and it sounds really messed up for some reason. And these little cubes on the planet, as the basic premise of the game, are upset that the music is not sounding good like it usually does. So we're gonna investigate. The way to investigate is to go move into this little elevator that you see here on top of the planet. If you go inside the elevator, it'll take you into the interior. Now Jesse's gonna tell you a little bit about the gameplay, which happens on the interiors of the planets. Our gameplay is a platformer, and one of the important parts of the platformer is um, letting the player know where their character is in space. Um, to help aid them with this, we um, have several rendering effects. Um, one, as you can see, is we draw reflections of the player on the ground. And another is we draw little ripples um, coming out of the player, um, both on the ground and the walls that help locate them, uh, the player in space. One thing you've already noticed about the game is its heavy use of grid-based lines. We used two techniques to make these lines look and feel right. The first technique is called bloom, and is normally used to simulate the way that bright light bleeds around the edges of dark objects. In this case, we used bloom to make the lines glow. When combined with altering the brightness of the lines over time, this bloom effect makes the world look almost like it's breathing. The second technique we use to enhance the appearance of the grids is full screen anti-aliasing. The entire scene is constantly being rendered eight times the size you see on the screen. When this larger scene is downsized to the screen's dimensions, the colors are mixed together in a way that removes virtually all of the line's nasty-looking jagged artifacts. With these two effects and the texture we created for the walls, the world really lights up. As you'll recall from the game's beginning, your goal is to help the little cubes by fixing the music of their planets. Each planet is fixed, like most things in life, by stepping on a large red button like the one you see here. Upon pressing the red button, you'll be launched quickly back into space where you can proceed to the next planets to press their buttons to fix the music for those planets. Now Jesse's going to describe one of the more fun parts of playing UCube. One of the platforming elements in our game is this black hole. Black holes provide a lot of cool opportunities for rendering effects. As you can see here, uh, we're using soft particles so that we can use large point sprites without making them look like they're cutting into the mesh of the black hole. We also render lightning. We procedurally generate lightning with an L system so that it's different each time. Lastly, we should mention that the game does not use much in the way of external libraries. The physics, for example, is all done using a custom-built rigid body simulator. Our sound engine is built on top of one called FMOD, which is an excellent 3D audio engine. We hope you've enjoyed hearing just a little bit about how we made this game. Hopefully sometime soon we'll have a version released so you can play it too. We're Jason Riggs and Jesse Reuter, and this was UQ.